Well, hi there. I'm Clint from Clint's Reptiles. And I'm Russ of Aquarimax. And we're teaming up today to help you decide if the Madagascar hissing cockroach is the best pet invertebrate for you. Russ, I, I thank you for, for having me on your channel. I, I love the videos that you make, and you've been such a great supporter of our channel for a long time. Uh, it was wonderful that in that brief little window where the reptile room was open, you were able to come down and visit, and we were able to set up this incredible adventure exploring these insects and a couple of rad arthropods that you brought down. So I'm super excited about showing those off as well. Me too. But these guys are, are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. And, and you were telling me earlier that you are not allowed to keep any cockroaches, right? Right. Now, that is unfortunate because these guys, I honestly, like, I can't think of a more reasonable pet that a person can have than these guys. And, and they're called hissing cockroaches because, especially the males, I've got kind of an old male here. You ready? Listen for this. Here, I'll set him right here. Males, males make this noise a lot more than females. But, but listen, listen, listen. Hold him up to the mic. So that is a pretty loud noise. Run away! Run away! That is a pretty loud noise for an insect to make. And, and the thing is, most insects, when they make a noise, they're vibrating something. They're, they're like rubbing two wings together or something like that. That is not the case with hissing cockroaches. Hissing cockroaches are making sound in very much the same way that most vertebrates make sound, which is by exhaling rapidly. But the crazy thing about insects is that insects, well, they don't have any lungs. And, and in fact, their blood doesn't even transport oxygen around. Right. They have a tracheal system, which is a system of tubes that personally deliver air directly to every cell in their body. And, and so what these guys do is they contract parts of their body to force the air out of that tracheal system really rapidly and make that bodacious sound. <laughs> They're so cool. That is very cool. So that's where they get the uh, hissing part of their name. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, like you said, I can't keep roaches because, well, my family lived in Hawaii for three years. And my uh, wife decided that once we got back, that we weren't hosting any more roaches mm. because we had to do so intentionally, or you know, unintentionally for quite some time. So that's why we can't keep them. But they are, like you said, I'm I'm not immune to the charms of a, <laughs> of a Madagascar hissing cockroach. You know, the non-pestiferous roaches are amazing. So um, I just good want to choice. kind of ask you, first of all, how do you house them? If I, if somebody wants to keep them. How do they do it? That, that is one of the... Oops, good jump. That is one of the great things about hissing cockroaches is they're remarkably easy to house. They can climb semi-smooth surfaces somewhat. They're not great at it. A lot of cockroaches can run right up basically anything, right up glass. Um, I love the dubia cockroaches because they basically don't climb at all. Climb at all. These guys climb a little bit better than dubias, but not super well. So basically anything that has a lid that, that closes up so tightly that the roaches and potentially their babies can't get out. That works great as, as an enclosure for them. They, they do really well, you know, housed very simply on things like paper towels, but also substrate like eco-earth. They'll burrow down into that, enjoy that quite a lot. Um, but yeah, housing them is extremely easy. You just need essentially a box with a lid. And how is the ventilation? Do they need a lot or? Um, not a ton. In fact, I mean, they, they do really well in basically any sort of box, at least in this dry climate. If you live in a wet climate with high humidity, probably better ventilation is going to be more important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't want these guys to dry out, but they're, not, they're pretty drought tolerant, especially if you're feeding them moist foods like fruits and vegetables on a regular basis. They're going to stay hydrated. De desiccation isn't really a big problem for them. They're just, they're just really awesome. They're very, very simple and easy to house. Wow. And it sounds like you have a lot of options in terms of the enclosure itself as well as the substrate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do they like uh, a lot of hides? They will. You know, like most cockroaches, they kind of prefer to be hidden during the day. And so they will take 
full advantage of hides if provided with them. Uh, you know, even even if you've got just things like a flat piece of cork bark, they'll they'll go under that. They'll bury themselves down in the substrate if necessary, which is actually kind of an important thing to talk about is the fact that they will bury themselves, especially to escape heat and light. Those are the mm -hmm. main things. Uh, one one issue that people run into, and you've probably talked about this before, is if you want to breed hissing cockroaches, you need to elevate the temperature a little bit. And so the use of a heat mat on a thermostat is really good if you're going to breed them. They'll do pretty well at room temperature unless you're breeding them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people will put a heat mat on the bottom like you would for a reptile. And the thing is, with a lot of arthropods, they will bury themselves and the, they'll dig deeper to get to cooler temperatures. If they're getting too hot, they'll go down. And if you have the heat mat on the bottom, the deeper they go, the warmer it'll get. And mm -hmm. unless you've got cockroaches that come off like the side of a volcano, they're never gonna figure this out. And so they can end up cooking themselves. Mm -hmm. So you wanna put that heat mat on the side and really only if you're breeding them. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, can we talk a little bit about feeding and hydration? Yes. We did a little bit, but let's, let's go into that a little more. It is really the best. I mean, this is a cockroach that could easily drown if you put like a big deep water dish in there. You can put a shallow water dish and they will do just fine with that. It's actually fairly difficult to drown an insect because of that tracheal system. Mm -hmm. Even even if they get waterlogged and pass out, a lot of times you can take an insect and set it down and as soon as it dries out, the tracheal system starts working again, off they go. Um, but their main source of moisture is going to come just from the foods that you offer to them. Uh, a lot of times people will leave some sort of dry food in there, things like oatmeal, cat food, dry dog food. These are all things that they will gladly take as just sort of a staple food available all the time. But what I mm -hmm. prefer to feed them generally are fresh fruits and vegetables. I just make sure that they're washed very, very carefully and, and as often as possible peeled because there are usually pesticides used on fruits and vegetables which are intended to kill things exactly like this. So you mentioned that you need to elevate the temperature for breeding. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do you need to do to breed them? How does that work? Other than, other than elevate the temperature, uh, as far as breeding goes, if you have males and females, adults together, they're going to breed. And, and females can retain sperm for a long time, so you may have females that you bought as adults from the pet store and you don't have a male, they still might end up breeding. And, and they actually are going to... It's, it's hard to really tell you if I would consider this egg laying or live birth. I mean, it's they're, they're sort of ovoviviparous in that they have eggs on, on this structure called an utheca. Like what you see with the praying mantis. Right. But they, they keep it inside of their abdomen most of the time. But every now and then you will see a roach and she's got that utheca protruding out the back of the abdomen and they're just sort of drying it and doing a little bit of temperature control on it and then they'll bring it right back into the abdomen. So it's like sometimes the eggs are inside and sometimes they're outside. At some point those eggs will hatch and all the babies will come out. Um, but one thing, one thing that I did want to talk to you about, and I, sh I showed you this a little bit earlier, is how to tell the difference between the male and the female oh, roaches. Yes. That's going to be really important if you want to breed them. Right. And so one very simple way on the adults is you'll notice on the pronotum, which is sort of this, this segment here at the front that goes right over the top of their head, and you've seen this on beetles and all sorts of other animals, the females have very small horn-like projections. And the male, and unfortunately this is the only adult male I have right now, and he's an old geriatric fellow, but they've got much, much, much larger horn-like projections. So that's very easy on adults. But the truth is, you can tell even on juvenile roaches by looking at the segments at the end of their abdomen, which is their, their third body section back here at the back. On females like these two, the back two segments, well, the back segment is very long. It's a very big, broad, shield-like final segment on the bottom side of the abdomen. Whereas with the males, even the juvenile males, you'll see that those last two, that's like two segments, so that same segment that's one big one on the females is two thinner segments, and that last segment is very, very small on the male. And it is like that right from the moment they're born. So you can, you, if, you, if you had like a jeweler's loop or really good eyes, you could sex a, a newly born 
First in star rest. First in star Madagascar hissing cockroach, no problem. Nice. So it sounds like breeding is very, very straightforward indeed then. Very straightforward and you know, and they're, they're born live and lots. You know, they might have about 30 a month okay. for you and so off you go. So if you want to breed them, you need to be prepared to deal with all of those. Yes, indeed, <laughs> which, which is honestly kind of a problem for me because I love these roaches. Uh, you know, I, doobie roaches, lots of other cockroaches I can use as feeders. To me, these have always been pets. And I, uh, unless I've got one that's just extremely old and ready to die, uh, I can't bring myself to feed them to anything. And, uh, but I do enjoy them a lot. Oh, yeah. I can see why, for sure. Well, Clint, um, for me, this has been amazing to be here. I'm really glad to, to come and be in the reptile room. It's, it's fantastic. It's a dream come true for me, actually. And uh, I wanted to thank you. Uh, for one, for allowing me to come and doing these collaborations with me, but also I wanted to give you a chance to introduce your face-to-face -face oh, program yeah. to everyone because uh, this is a great place to see. Clint's got a, a wealth of knowledge and a lot of interesting creatures to visit, and you can do so digitally. So can you tell them a little bit about that? Well, you might have noticed that we're living through a very strange time in human history. And during this extremely strange time in human history, actually just before this strange time began, we decided to open Clint's Reptile Room, which is a place for you and your family and your friends to all come and hang out with reptiles and talk about reptiles and just really enjoy the sorts of experiences with animals that you just can't have really in any other way. And, and, and so uh, right as the dream was starting to come to fruition, all social interaction got cut off. And, uh, and so, you know, it, it's left us here at the room with you know, no, no ability to have people come. And it's left a lot of the rest of us without the opportunity to go out and have any sort of experiences like these. And so thanks to Jason, honestly, uh, who, who is our, our producer and, and uh, just a, a wonderful part of our team at, at Clint Reptiles, we, we started doing online presentations. And so you, know, you and your friends, you can you can come through uh, via Zoom and we'll look at animals and talk about whatever you want to talk about. And we just hang out and have a great time. A lot of people have been doing it so far and it is so enjoyable and I so get, enjoy getting to meet everybody. It's been really, really an awesome experience and I, I hope that uh, a lot more people get to come join us soon. Yeah, me too. Would you mind if I put a link in the description? Oh, that'd be wonderful. More about that? That'd be wonderful. Excellent. And I want to take a moment to give a shout out to our supporters on Patreon. Basically, you know that taking care of animals and teaching people about them is my passion, and my supporters on Patreon, you all help me do that uh, more thoroughly and in more directions than I can imagine. So I just wanted to, to say thank you for everything that you do. And now let's get back to uh, the roaches and the pros of keep, keeping this particular species as a pet. There are a lot of pros. Uh, in fact, I mean, one of, one of the things is you can see they're very, very handleable. And it can be very enjoyable actually spending time with them, petting them. You know, as you have, I mean, these are, are not roaches that I've interacted with very much. And you can see they're already very, very calm with handling. You know, I can come over here, pet them. They hang out, they never bite. They've got some tarsal claws, but they're not gonna scratch you or tail whip. Like they're, they're completely harmless to you. Mm -hmm. If they get away in your house, they're not gonna start a giant colony because they can't survive without pretty, oh, they can't reproduce without elevated temperatures. So they're not, they're not a pest species. Mm -hmm. They're extremely easy to house, they're easy to feed. They just, I mean, basically, whenever you have fruits or vegetables that you're eating, save just a little bit for them. And you can also have some dry food in the rest of the time. Really easy to keep. If, you, if you're leaving town for a week, give them a little bit of food and go. They're, they're really as easy as a pet could possibly be. Um, there's almost no reason not to have them unless you just really don't like cockroaches or insects. Like that is, that is the only reason that a person wouldn't want to have Madagascar hissing cockroaches because I mean, they're just, they're just absolutely delightful. And they live a long time for an insect, mm -hmm. which, you know, most insects are very short-lived and that's actually one of the big cons to insects generally. These guys live several years for you. They're just awesome. They're just awesome. Yeah. Wow. And can you think of any cons? They are cockroaches. 
That's it. That's about it. That is it. <laughs> and and uh, one thing I have discovered over the last few years is people are more afraid of cockroaches than they are snakes. I, I bring in snakes to my classes. Sometimes people are a little un, uneasy the first day. After a few days, everybody's holding snakes. People will not touch a container that has cockroaches in it. And uh, I did not realize that people were so much more afraid of cockroaches than snakes until I started doing that. But it's it's pretty wild. So, you know, this is, this is a wide awake nightmare for a lot of people. <laughs> so, if you want a gentle giant that will sit placidly in the palm of your hand with a rad tracheal system, then the Madagascar hissing cockroach might be the best pet invertebrate for you. As always, like and subscribe to Aquarimax Pets, and we hope to see you real soon. Rolling. Rolling. Tap your face. Uh, I don't know. Do a little face tap, a little tap to tap. Face, yeah. Cute. As always, like and subscribe to Aquarimax Pets, and we hope to see you real soon. Say that again. I was okay. Well, hi there. Got him.